Conclusions. It's Monday, October 18th, 21. Thank you for being here today. And I also want to thank you for being here yesterday. If you joined us on Facebook, thank you so much for continuing to pursue God from wherever you are. I want to also especially thank those that made it to uh, to be present in the sanctuary with us yesterday. It was a special time. It was a difficult message addressing a serious issue about how to keep the body of Christ together and keep us from imploding um, from the, the work that the devil tries to accomplish in dividing us through gossip. It's a worthwhile message. If you have not heard it yet, I encourage you to do so. But also what comes in Sunday and what isn't shared um, to the, uh, the virtual community is our fellowship time. And our fellowship time follows uh, when we say goodbye to our Facebook family. And I just want to give an opportunity for those who are in attendance to ask questions and share testimony. And it's been a, a, a very helpful time during the pandemic for me to stay in touch with you, the church. And yesterday came a lot of really great questions. And we took the time and spent probably more time than, uh, than normal. But out of that, I believe God brought us together as a church. So thank you for being in attendance. And if, if you can attend, please let us know and we will arrange transportation. We are looking in the coming months to move from pandemic into our new facility at 1900 South Monroe, where we will be expanding our transportation ministry so now is the time to, uh, to get on the bus and uh, join us on Sundays. We have a lot to cover today, and I want to continue in perhaps the same vein of where the message came from yesterday, which is recognizing that the church is under assault on a regular basis from our enemy, the devil. He does not want us to succeed. He wants us to fail. He wants us to give up. He wants us to, to be broken apart and not the, just the opposite of what God desires for us. God desires for us to come together as the body. And the devil has nothing, doesn't want anything to do with that. So in that same vein, and when we suffer um, hardship, when we suffer, when uh, somebody important to us, is no longer there, uh, when we put all of our effort into what God has asked us to do and it doesn't seem to produce the result that we were expecting, what can come against us and, and what often works against us and, and inhibits our progress is something that I call what's the point. The, the what's the point spirit. And I know that it comes against each of you as individuals when you strive and strive and strive and the road doesn't ever seem to get any shorter and the challenges continue to come and you're feeling weak in the knees. There are times when the what's the point spirit threatens to get the best of us. And I freely admit, as your pastor, there are times after losing somebody in the congregation or that the timetable for our, our church expansion uh, is extended again or the cost for something that I think should be relatively inexpensive threatens to, to break our budget. All of those things can leave me questioning, why, Lord? What's the point of all this? Why have you asked me to give my life to the ministry, only for the ministry not to catch on as I expected it to? 
we would not be the first to ask these questions. These questions are asked throughout God's Word. So I hope this week that each of you will understand your mission. Each of you will understand the mission of Connections Church. And by the end of the week, you will be able to answer the question, what's the point? As we explore who we are and why God has called us. It begins with obedience. There are things that God is going to ask of us, and we may never understand fully why he asked it of us. It's his plan. His thoughts are so much more complex than ours. The word says higher than ours. However, obedience is not lost on what it can do within us. Obedience is one of the the core necessary pieces of faith. To step out into faith is to obey God when we don't have all the answers. And that is something that many of us struggle with. We want the answers. We want to know what we're leaping to is concrete. And we want it all laid out before us. We want to do a a cost analysis. We want to do a, a pros and cons list. When we are called to go when God calls upon us. Of course, the opposite of obedience is disobedience. And that's what we find in the world. We find a rebellious spirit. We find a a culture that promotes, "I, I deserve it my way. Which is, develops the selfishness that we see in the world. And turns the story to be all about me versus the kingdom. So in answering the question, what's the point? The first stop along the way is we must go even if we don't understand the point. Just as we've done in the past several weeks, we want to tie the New Testament to the Old Testament to demonstrate that God is the same God from the very beginning of our story to the very end of our story. So I hope today you will see yet another bridge as we explore topics from Paul's epistle to the Ephesians and then looking back to the prophet Ezekiel. So we're starting in Ephesians 2, 1. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world, and of the rulers of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. An ongoing theme over the last several weeks as we talk about building the body of Christ is doing the simplest things, demonstrating that your life has been transformed and living that life before others. In stark contrast to the disobedience that is so prevalent in the world, What Jesus has made possible is for us to come into the courts of heaven, to be washed clean and stand holy before our Father. 
That is for our own salvation and our own eternity, but more importantly, it is for us to demonstrate God's grace to the world. If he can accomplish that in me, he can accomplish that in you. There's still hope. Obedience versus disobedience. Now we turn to Ezekiel. And if you study Ezekiel, you will find that at the very essence of Ezekiel is his willingness to obey. Now Ezekiel is coming is a is a prophet to a a people in exile. He is called after the fall of Jerusalem as they're taken into captivity in Babylon. He has not afforded all the trappings of a priest or a prophet. Yet God uses him powerfully to speak correction and encouragement into the, the children of God who are now living in Babylon in exile. But some of the things that God calls upon him to do are outrageous. And I'm sorry to say, if God asked any of us to do the things that he asked Ezekiel to do, we'd probably start looking at our contract. Where in, in, in here did it say that I had to? So I encourage you, if you are, are, are feeling the pressure of obedience and, and uh, God's control of your life and uh, what it means to be called, that after reading Ezekiel, <laughs> you will feel that God has given you great latitude and freedom in comparison to what he asked of his servant Ezekiel. Now that can be a good thing and that can be a bad thing. Ezekiel certainly understood and was was in, in a very connected relationship with God and through these experiences that God asked him to accomplish, he gains greater insight into the burden, into the heartache of God himself. And he is able to minister and, and console and build the bridge between God and his people much more effectively than, than we can since we haven't had those experiences. The point being that before you say, I'm willing to do these five things, Lord, but I will not do these three. You need to pause and recognize that first and foremost, our relationship to God will be formed in love and our response to that love which is obedience. We're going to move fairly late in the, the, um, the book of Ezekiel to Ezekiel 37, starting in 1. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. How did Ezekiel get here? How did he, he get to a place 
where he was in such close fellowship with God. Obedience. You see, by the time we reach chapter 37 of his lifelong pursuit of God, the rebellion in his, his inmost being has been squelched, and now, no matter what God asks, he submits to, which now makes him the perfect vessel to demonstrate very large, important concepts that would lead the Israelites in captivity and also inform Connections Church when we ask, what's the point? It's the beginning of our story, and we will follow uh, Ezekiel the rest of the way through. But today, let's, let's close out in prayer and looking forward to how God will answer our question throughout the week. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. You've called us from the darkness, Lord. It wasn't long ago that we had carved out a comfortable spot. We lived for ourselves and our own ambitions. Had the devil had his way, we would have just slumbered our lives away, died in obscurity, and suffered an eternity away from you. Yet you sent your son to die for us, to, to proclaim that we have greater worth than we ever understood. Let our response to your outpouring of love be our obedience. It's difficult, Lord. We want to be encouraged forward each and every step of the way. We want the desires of our heart to come to fruition. The rebelliousness in us wants to encourage us to take the reins and drive our, our own way forward. Today, we choose to submit to your plan, recognizing that your plan is the plan that will get us home. Your plan is the plan that sees us succeed. Your plan is the plan that will allow us to finish strong. Forgive us, Lord, for the times that we get off track, that we succumb to the, the spirit of this world, and as it draws us backwards, break us free, Lord. Break those who are dear to us free and help us learn obedience. It's the first step to understanding the point. You can't reveal more to us until we are willing to, to follow. Oh, what you desire to, to show us, what you desire to reveal to us, what you desire to accomplish through us. We pray, Lord, that you would squelch the rebellion that lives within each of us so that it may come to pass. And we will see revival. We will see people saved for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, 
Amen. All right, off to a good start. Thank you for being here with me. Know that I love you and that I miss you. I'm looking forward to being together again very soon. Until then, be good. <laughs>